research receives more than 100 samples of traditional herbal medication to be tested for COVID-19 treatment. Media General celebrates mothers in grand style. Coming up in international news, coronavirus infections in Germany rising as lockdown eases. We have details of these stories and more coming up shortly. Do stay with us. And the Ghana Medical Association is urging President Ekufuado not to lift the ban on social gatherings, including religious activities, schools, marriages, and funerals, as the country continues to record high numbers of COVID-19 cases. The association also wants the president to ensure that all Ghanaians comply with all COVID-19 protocols. In a statement on Saturday, May 9, the Ghana Medical Association said non-adherence to the COVID-19 preventive measures at this point in a collective fight against the disease has a huge potential to erode any gains made so far. It added it also has the propensity to escalate further the spread of the disease. The association said seeming disregard for all the preventive measures put in place by large sections of the population is a major threat to curtailing the disease in the country. The association also implored governments to ensure prompt and continuous distribution of personal protective equipment to all health workers at various institutions at all times. Right, also the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists has advised government against lifting the ban on public gatherings, given the high reproduction rate of the coronavirus infections in the country. The GMLs in the statement signed by the Head of Public Relations, Dr. Dennis Edujesi, indicated that considering the non-compliance to the prescribed precautionary measures, such as social distancing and wearing of face masks, the ban must be maintained and strictly enforced. The association is also asking government to, as a matter of urgency, begin mass testing and expand the testing capacity in order to stop the spread of COVID-19 in Ghana. The statement further advocates for the continued closure of the country's borders until such a time when the rate of infections has been brought under its utmost control. All right, so talking about coronavirus and its effects, on us, we go to the Western region and speak to Derek, uh, Eric Yaweje. He's our Western region correspondent, and uh, we understand, well, there's some tragic news there. Eric, we understand the Western region has uh, recorded its first death. What can you tell us more about that? Thank you very much. Um, good evening to you and good, good evening to your viewers. Yes, in, you had right that um, we've had our first death as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we are learning that um, she's a health worker at the Ghana Manganese Company Hospital in the Takwa Insoyen municipality. We do understand that somewhere last week, her samples were taken because there was some suspicion that she may be carrying the COVID-19 virus. So the, we are told that she was she was made to self-isolate, but before her result came, she died. She, we are told that she died yesterday evening. That is what we are picking. And it is out of the five cases, her case is out of the five cases that uh, we are told were confirmed today. Unfortunately, again, uh, there's another doctor at the Ghana Manganese Company Hospital, same facility, we are learning he's also on admission because of the suspected COVID-19 case. So I can report that indeed, um, if you come to Western region, precisely the Takwa Insoye municipality, if you go to Insuta, um, the, uh, there's a nurse there at the Ghana Manganese Company Hospital and she has passed on because of the COVID-19. 
Right, Eric, that's, that, that's really uh, tragic. These are the frontliners, and we really are doing everything that we can do to make sure that they are really kept alive, strong, so they can take care of us. But from your observation, are the restrictive protocols being observed? I mean, what do people think about them? Uh, well, I, I must say that if you come to the Western region, um, the, I can say that there's a high level of compliance with regards to the donning of face masks and uh, washing your hands and all that. I know that the Sekendi Takradi Metropolitan Assembly has in place a tax force that has been moving around town and ensuring that people are wearing their nose masks. I'm told that there was an incident somewhere last week that some persons refused to don their nose masks and they were really disciplined on the spot. That generated some controversy here, but um, some of the residents said that it's a good measure because, I mean, we all must ensure that we don't spread the COVID-19. What is worrying with our case is that so far, all the cases that we have are asymptomatic. So yeah, the residents are very worried. They don't know who is carrying the virus. So they are, they are happy with the fact that there's a tax force in place and ensuring strict compliance. But I must also add that now our case count has moved from 37 to um, 52 as at 6 p.m. today. Uh, we are told that we had 14 new confirmed cases today and one suspected case. Um, the, the one that the one that is coming from Takwa, it is five. We are we are learning that we have five new cases from Takwa, and one is the health worker, the nurse who has just passed on, and the doctor who is on admission. Um, we are learning that as part of effort to ensure that um, they don't. The disease will not spread. We are learning that the hospital has been closed down. I've been trying to get hold of some sources at the company, but we are learning that they are currently locked up in a meeting. The meeting we are learning has been going on for the past two hours, Lisa. Right. So, uh, Eric, one, one area of concern is actually about the way we move about in the market and even in the transport area. What can you make? Um, of the situation now. Are our security services operating around those areas to enforce the laws? Well, even, even before uh, Accra went on a lockdown, I, I remember that there was a release from the Second Data Crime Metropolitan Assembly and the Fia Kuma, the Fia Kwesimisi Municipal Assembly, and um, as part of measures to ensure that there is no spread of the COVID 19 here in these two assemblies, they they, they removed some of the traders who were selling, for instance, at uh, unauthorized places. And if you come to the market circle, they relocated the traders who were selling both in and outside the perimeter to the Jubilee Park. If you go to secondary two, I know that uh, persons who were engaged in the Tuesday market and who were also selling around the market were taken to a community park. If you go to Kodiokrom Market, to some of the traders were, have been relocated and they don't break their cargo inside the market anymore. And if you look around, to, you see a lot of um, Veronica buckets around. You see a lot of people uh, wearing their nose masks. I'm told that there have been conversations with the various transport unions and now they've reduced the number of passengers. And it is interesting that if any passing, if any drivers may attempt to overload, you get a resistance from the passengers. So I must say that um, fairly uh, the people here are complying with the social distancing and the other protocols that we have. And Isa, I must also add that you do recall that our first case came from a Chinese national who was working with a quarry company, coastal quarry company in Shama. And the, we are told that he has recovered. So that is the update that I can give. He yeah. has recovered. And um, the contact tracing, majority of the contact that were traced have come out um, negative. So um, I remember about 72 contacts were traced at the company. And we are learning that majority of the results okay. are negative. Okay, so Eric, we're, we're grateful for that piece of good news, the news of the recovery. Eric Yaweje is the Western Regional Correspondent for TV3.
And away from the Western region, the raging spread of the coronavirus and the global economic fallout for measures to contain it have created a gaping demand for a cure. Although no proven cure has emerged, the Center for Plant Medicine Research says it has received more than 100 samples of traditional herbal medication to be tested for COVID-19 treatment. In the following report, we explore if traditional herbal practitioners hold the key to finding a cure. Traditional herbal medicine no doubt plays a vital healthcare role in many communities in Africa. According to the World Health Organization, some 70% of patients in Ghana use herbal medicine. The neem tree, hibiscus tea, popularly referred to as sobolo, moringa, among other herbal remedies, have been used by many to cure different types of ailments. Despite this, it has received low consideration from medical experts, demanding more scientific evidence, especially with the outbreak of coronavirus. News of Madagascar developing its own herbal treatment for COVID-19 has been received with skepticism. Aren't there any known herbal remedies to fight COVID-19? Can traditional herbal medicine fight the virus? And what is Ghana's own contribution towards finding a treatment for COVID-19? These questions led me to seek answers at the Center for Plant Medicine Research at Mampong, Ikuyapim, in the Eastern Region. Long before orthodox medicine, our forefathers used to take herbal products to cure and treat different forms of ailments. As the world races to find a cure for COVID-19, who knows, treatments could come from here at the Center for Plant Medicine Research. The Center for Plant Medicine Research was established in 1975 as a result of the dream and vision of Dr. Okwampofo, a renowned allopathic medical practitioner. The center's vision is to make herbal medicine a natural choice for all. So what has been the center's contribution in finding treatment for COVID-19? The president said we should get a treatment for the COVID-19. So because of that, we also decided to do our research into these areas. And um, we have done that. Our team of researchers have been on it. And what we are looking at is to make sure that we have treatment for dealing with the symptoms that um, the COVID-19 um, um, comes up with. And also making sure that um, we will see how we can boost the immune system because we know that when you have COVID-19, your immune system becomes weaker. And we know with a strong immune system, you are able to withstand it and then you get healthier. The pandemic has revealed some of the weaknesses in our healthcare system. So we are also looking at making sure that we build our capacity. At the center, all submitted herbal products go through detailed and thorough laboratory analysis to ensure that the products meet the highest quality and safety standards and that they are wholesome for human consumption. Research takes um, some time and we want to make sure that the type of product that we come out is something that is good. Remember that we want to gain the highest recognition. And we do that in partnership with other people. And one thing that I would like to draw your attention is that before any herbal product can be manufactured and sold, you have to get approval from the Food and Drug Authority. So whatever we are doing, we are collaborating with them to ensure that what we bring out is something that will be acceptable. We have over 100 products that have been brought here for testing. And when you bring your products here for testing, it has to go through some processes. First, if we want to find out about the safety of it and we take it to our pharmacology you know, department, we have to make sure that you know, there are some I mean, analysis that will be done that will involve, let's say we have some animals that we use. So if you have a lot of products coming at the same time, we will be stretched in terms of what we have to do. So here, that is when it comes in. So we just want to make sure that we will be in a position to scale up our production. These herbal products here in the laboratory could be possible remedies for COVID-19. And they also have another batch of products, purposely for the COVID uh, management or treatment. 
uh, received from various herbalists. In fact, we have received over 100 of such products. We're working on them batch by batch. And some of them are promising, some of them too are not too good. We are not done with all the 100 years, but I have looked at about 50 something. And then we have around 10% doing well. Mm. Which is even enough, even if you get one, it's good. Uh, they are showing antibacterial activity, they are showing very strong other antimicrobial activity. So we have to move on to the next level using the other viruses or the same SARS virus. Or after this stage, we write a report, give it to the person of plants or the manufacturer, and it sends to the FDA. The FDA will consider it and give the appropriate certificate for it. Other products, though, do not make the mark. So you can see, each one is one bacterium or one organ that has multiplied severally to form this colony, and which is what we call the colony forming unit. Now this is what we will count, so you can say she's counting them. And sometimes they are too much that they form a smear or they form together. So we'll count this and we we'll estimate how many they are. If the count is more than, per the dilution that we did, if it's more than uh, 50,000 of this in a meal, then we say that it has not passed, it has failed. The centre is also engaging other stakeholders and partners to explore research opportunities in the fight against COVID-19 using herbal medication. Hopefully, with further clinical trials, Ghana's herbal medicine will make news as possible cure or treatments for COVID-19. Poshe Gabo, TV3 News, Mampong Mkwiapem, Eastern Region. Anna Cameroonian and mother of three, Deborah Dot Doche, has been adjudged the winner of TV3 Mother's Day competition dubbed Mama's Gut Talent. So the competition, which forms part of the Mother's Day celebration by TV3, enabled mothers to exhibit their unique talent. Here's a report by Adwa Adobio Usu. TV3 Network, as part of this year's Mother's Day celebration, organized a competition to give mothers the opportunity to display their talents. The day was also a chance to celebrate mothers for their hard work, love and support to their various families. Four finalists were selected based on the most liked videos that were posted on TV3's social media platforms. The four mothers displayed skills such as dancing, playing the bass guitar, the keyboard, and rapping. After two minutes each of a talent display, a Cameroonian mother of three who showed her unique talent in rap emerged winner of the competition. I'm excited because uh, it's good to be appreciated for people to see your talent and appreciate you. Though I'm, um, I don't know, I probably start my rap career. <laughs> so all the rappers in Ghana should get ready, the Shatawales and the Sarkodiers. She encouraged women not to let anything deter them from achieving their dreams. It's always a pleasure when women or mothers are being celebrated. You know, we always have kids' talent shows, we have singing shows, we have dancing shows, but we have not really had a show that would showcase the talent of women. I just pray that we could do something bigger than what we had to do, so we get many more women coming on board. A bass guitarist emerged second, while keyboardist Doris Lai came third. Selena Haibo, who took the fourth position, was elated for such an opportunity to exhibit her talents on national television. It's not easy, but I was able to perform and I'm very happy. Her twins saw it as a chance for her to overcome her shyness. My mom loves dancing and the only problem she has is she, she feels shy a lot. So that inspired me to post the video so in case she come and perform here she will gather much courage and then come and perform winners received hampers spa treats dinner for two and other prizes
And Onya TV has rewarded about 15 mothers of its staff and some key personalities as part of the Mother's Day program dubbed Mami Mu. This is to acknowledge the efforts and roles mothers play in the upbringing of children. Another report by Ajwa Dubiwusu. Mother's Day is to acknowledge the efforts of mothers and to celebrate the pivotal role they play in the lives of children and society. Onya TV, as a way of marking the day, invited the mothers of some staff members of Onya TV, Onya FM and some key personalities in the country to a program dubbed Mami Mo. Host of Enijemre, Christian Frimpon's mother as well as the mother of Dr. Pekese were rewarded. Um, she was a teacher and she now was very, very disciplined. And um, the director of public affairs of the Ghana Police Service, Sheila Abaye Buckman, was not left out. Popular gospel musician Celestine Donko treated her mother, whose birthday fell on this day, to some good music. I've not really brought my mother on TV like that. So it's something new to her and she's, she so much appreciates it, isn't it? And it just, um, Some mothers who were rewarded on the show also took the opportunity to share their gratitude and gave advice to upcoming mothers. The general manager for Onya TV, Bright Kwisiya Senpa, explained the rationale behind the celebration. The papa mo ang kaya besiya yung mama mo niya niyo matun sa di di ba COVID nineteen inti yung decide sa yung bema ang krofwa ba abetun yung mama mo mama mo na matumi edi acha di kakra edi ama mama mo me ba chow enyo bibiya niya tumi invite ano ni mo mo niya TV si be bibiya wo bibiya wo yung mama mo kwa diya yung si mama mo. The mothers were presented with hampers containing food items and drinks. Right now, here's a story of a woman whose husband was a seaman who went on voyage over 20 years ago and never returned home, leaving her with three daughters, one of whom turned blind. Wendy Lai visited Anumabu Bantama in the central region and threw the spotlight on the AC ideal. Essie Aidil is 60 years and a mother of three. Her last daughter, Faustina, lives with her at Anumabu Bantama in the central region. The 60-year-old says her husband left for work and never returned, compelling her to abandon a number of things she was engaged in to take care of the children. My husband was a seaman. My husband traveled more than 20 years. I don't know where he is now. So I was the one suffering to take care of them. Since they are childhood. The second blow was when her then 13-year-old daughter became blind. She was playing with friends. One of them attacked and bite her left eye. I decided to take her to so many hospitals. The doctors told me that there's nothing they can do with the eye. AC says her life took a different turn as she spends every day dedicated to the well-being of her daughter. AC lost her business capital as a trader in the process. Over the years, Essie has been the support system of her visually impaired daughter, Faustina, even though she relies heavily on the benevolence of others. Despite the challenges, Faustina, now 25, has risen above it. She is in level 100 at the Cape Coast University and wants to be a teacher. I need financial assistance to take care of my daughter so that she will complete and graduate. In these COVID times, as he says, she is confident her daughter is safe despite the fact that they live in a family house. 
She's always in the house. Make sure putting notes, mask, washing it, her hair. As a parent of a child with visual impairment, there are certainly times she feels stressed. On the second Sunday in May, mothers are honored for their positive contributions to society, and this is how Faustina chooses to celebrate her mother and bond with her. Happy Mother's Day to you. 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 Day to you. And to thank you for loving and supporting me. God bless you. Happy, happy Mother's Day. According to AC, her daughter's struggles may be the cause of her suffering at times, but she is also the cause of great joy and laughter. I'm encouraging Mother's Day. If your child goes to that situation, you shouldn't abandon her. You should leave them to come out. To do something better. To all mothers like Isi Aidu, we say thank you. Wendy Lai, TV3 News, Anomabo Bantama, Central Region. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. In other news, the Kintampo Health Research Center will in the near future start testing suspected cases of COVID-19 following urgent attention to acquire a QPCR testing machine. The move will expedite the testing of suspected cases in the Middle Belt. The Bono Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Kufisa, made this known at a media briefing. The Bono Regional Director of the Ghana Health Service noted the urgent need to equip the research center with a QPCR testing machine due to the breakdown of a genes expert machine that needed to be recalibrated. Following the recording of the first positive coronavirus case in the region, Dr. Issa said the health directorate has stepped up contact tracing in the field to take samples from identified primary contacts for quarantine. We would have to make sure that we take all those who were in contact with the fellow within two days prior to the day of isolation. So that means that we will go back almost two days to be able to pick up all these people now that is what we have done he added high surveillance is being mounted in all the 12 districts of the region to gain a broader picture of the infection for appropriate response he reminded the public to continue to adhere to safety protocols to lessen the impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the economy and social life According to the Bono Regional Health Director, the confirmed case is a 27-year-old Tukulese national who is among 10 other people who illegally crossed into Ghana from Ivory Coast. The remaining nine migrants have been handed over to the national security for prosecution. You're watching News 360 and now Ghana has an estimated 0.8%. 805% of COVID-19 infection rate on a weekly basis. This is according to researchers in statistics, biostatistics, and epidemiologists at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. They have suggested the country begins daily testing for the virus to pave way for daily updates. Benjamin Edu reports. Ghana had so far conducted over 130,000 COVID-19 tests with a backlog of more than 1,000 samples awaiting testing at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research in Tropical Medicine. The Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research, however, had no backlog. Dr. Nana Kena Frimpon at the Statistics and Actuarial Science Department of the Kenya University said once the backlog of cases is cleared, test results can be provided within 24 hours. When it comes to tracking and uh, tracing and testing, um, it was Noguchi that I, I read a report saying that they have actually cleared all the backlog. So henceforth, they, are actually, they can actually do a real-time testing, which is very fantastic and good for us to get much more information about the growth of the epidemic or the care. 
Dr. Frimpon called for the establishment of more testing centers in the country. He also spoke on the country's recovery rate. By WHO protocol, you have to do double testing before a person is actually cleared of the, the virus. So after going through the first testing, it takes a lot of days for the second testing to done. At the same time, it is the same uh, resources and infrastructure that we have to do the new cases testing. So they cannot, I'm seeing that they cannot do it simultaneously. So it's some kind of a lag that is causing these recovery rate numbers not to uh, go high as, as compared to the number of cases. An Accra High Court has granted bail to eight persons accused of being part of a plot to destabilize the country. Each of them were, was granted bail to a tune of 10 million cities with two sureties to be justified and must show proof that they have properties worth the 10 million CD bail sum. The eight accused are Dr. Frederick McPalm, who is accused of masterminding the alleged plot, Kennel Samuel Kojo Gamali, Donya Kafui, Bright Alan Deborah Ofusu, Johannes Jitbi, Corporal Seidu Abubakar, Lance Corporal Ali Som Solomon, and Corporal Sylvester Akampeon. The court, as part of the bill conditions, ordered the eight persons to deposit their passports to the registrar of the court and also to the police twice every week. This was after their lawyer, Victor Adawudu, filed a bail application at the High Court. The eight are among a group of 10 persons accused of being part of Take Action Ghana, a group the state accused of plotting to destabilize the country and overthrow the government. Two other accused persons, ACP Dr. Benjamin Agojo and WO2 Esther Dekuwini, are already on bail. You're on News 360 and it's live from the News app here at Adesanwe. We'll return shortly with some more. Do stay with us. Mission is brought to you by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. As the world celebrates mothers, TV3 Mission is bringing to you the story of a mother's undying love for her child. <laughs> When Agnes Teko Nyamite became pregnant at 46 years, she left with joy knowing her pregnancy was indeed the miracle she had been praying for. And then when I went to the hospital and I asked, I missed my period, the nurse on duty said that it was menopause because I was 46 then. But I asked her to allow me to go through the lab test and see whether it's pregnancy. So I went through the lab test and the following day they asked me to come and it was positive. It was a difficult one because I had had my first child um, who was 18 years then. But when she gave birth, she was told her daughter had extra chromosomes, meaning she was born with a condition known as Down syndrome. An associate pater with my church, First Baptist Church, she came actually to visit me when I was in the hospital. And I had told her that the doctor had told me that my daughter has Down syndrome, but I refused it in Jesus' name. She told me that, yes, you can refuse it. It's not, it's not bad if you say you refuse it in Jesus' name. But what if God says no? I will not change this girl's condition. But this is the child that I have given you. What will you do? You don't know me that, yes, God can also say no. This is the child I have given you, so what, what will I do? She had told me that she had delivered a, a baby girl. I didn't know there was any conditions or she was... Uh, she was diagnosed with any condition, so then when I go home, and I saw herself in the, herself in the web, and she was reading about Down syndrome. And then I had an idea about Down syndrome. I didn't really know what it was, but I had a general idea of what Down syndrome was. So I asked her why she was reading about Down syndrome, and then she just broke down in tears. So then I knew that 
No, but it must have been something close to me, someone close to us. So I just, uh, I just uh, surmised that it was my sister who had Down syndrome. Vowing to let her daughter live in a socially inclusive environment despite the challenges and stigmatization, Agnes has enrolled Toda in school. She's at the Walmart Christian Academy and she's making progress slowly. I love you. Good. Give me high five. When she was first enrolled in the school, she wasn't able to identify colors. Even to grab a pencil or a crayon to color, she was having a problem with it. But thanks be to God, now she can scribble, she can color in an accurate uh, space that you give her to color. Parents of children with special needs should always be encouraged to send their wards to school. Here at the Wilmot Christian Academy, Toda is a living example that through inclusive education, children with and without special needs can all be in one classroom and enjoy quality education. Down syndrome is a lifelong clinical condition caused by extra chromosomes found in a person's biology. Chromosomes determine the physical characteristics of every person such as the hair, eyes, color and height. Children with Down syndrome, because of their extra chromosomes, come with some peculiar physical traits. For example, they may appear to have a flat face, eyes that slant upwards and are more floppy, resulting in delayed developments like sitting, crawling, walking and talking. Diagnosis of Down syndrome can be done at the prenatal stage of pregnancy using blood tests and an ultrasound scan. Despite the challenges and limitations that come with having Down syndrome, Toda is living her life to the fullest. She's a model and walks like a pro. She offered to even teach me some lessons in modeling. Down Syndrome Awareness Month is marked every year in October to celebrate people with Down Syndrome and to make people aware of the abilities and accomplishments of persons living with the condition. Toda, darling. Yes, ma'am. You know I love you so much. Yes. When you came into my life, I thought you were a problem. But you've been a blessing to me. And I love you so much. I believe that there are a lot of things that you can do. And by the grace of God, you achieve them. Thank you. I love you. I love you so, so much. My mom and I, we set up a foundation, Toda Kunet Foundation, and the purpose of the foundation was to create awareness on the condition, Down syndrome, and uh, also to educate people, to um, reach out to people, with Down, uh, children and parents of children with Down syndrome, reach out to them and then try to encourage them to accept their children the way they are, love them the way they are, teach them how to be able to cater for themselves. Porsche Gabo, TV3 News, Accra. That's all for Mission. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Let's do some more stories tonight. And the Manya Krobo Traditional Council has launched a COVID-19 emergency fund to respond to the needs in two districts under the Traditional Council. Kono of Manya Krobo, Nene Sakite, noted it was better to be prepared than to be caught shorthanded as cases in the lower Manya municipality have increased. Here's Yvonne Nikwe's report. 
The Lower Manya Krobo Municipality, which is under the Manya Krobo Traditional Council, is currently managing 70 cases out of the total 98 COVID-19 figures recorded in the Eastern Region. The Kono of Manya Krobo, Nene Sakite, stressed the need for an emergency fund to mobilize resources. We must always be prepared. It is better for us to be over prepared than to be caught short handed or unprepared in dealing with this crisis. The traditional council made an upfront payment of 22,000 Ghana cities of the 50,000 cities that it intends to realize from the fund. He urged all indigents to put aside rivalries and petty grievances that could threaten the fight against the containment of COVID-19 in the traditional area. A 12-member committee was also set up to identify and appropriately respond to related resource needs in the area of health, medical support and community and social welfare. Upper Manya Krobo District Chief Executive Felix Ajao explained the assembly was still enforcing measures in markets and pledged commitment to the fund launched. Lower Manya Krobo Municipal Chief Executive Simon Kwekutete expressed worry COVID-19 patients were still being stigmatized against. I've gotten complaints from people in the municipality that when they even join cars outside the municipality, people try to mock at them, which is not the best. Stigmatization of somebody who has a positive case or where there is a positive case will not help us at all. The Upper Manyakobo District Chief Director Esther Dia Uyinka emphasized the need to eat balanced meals and requested for logistical support. Lower Manyakobo Municipal Health Director Bismarck Sakodie also appealed for more logistical support. Eastern Region, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly has served notice that bodies of persons who die of infectious diseases, including COVID-19, will be strictly handled by a medical officer or an authorized health officer and not families of the deceased. The Assembly in a statement said this is in accordance with Section 10, Clause 2A and B of the Public Health Act 2012, Act 851, which provides that a medical officer or an authorized health officer may determine the manner in which the remains of a deceased person is to be disposed of. The AMA further urged all stakeholders to adhere to the laid down protocols to ensure the safety of all so as to prevent transmission of such communicable diseases in society. Now, it's been a month since government announced the local production of nose masks in the country to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Five local companies were announced and tasked to produce 3.6 million nose masks in 10 days. There is more in the following report. Three, Ghana began the local production of nose masks. Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaje, made this known at a press briefing on March 27. We've started the process of um, having some local production of one and one wearing is a local production that's uh, comfortable, it can be washed and real. And I think this is something we want to prove. We want to ensure and encourage all people to wear masks. Despite the assurances, frontline health workers still complained over the lack of personal protective equipment, with some threatening to redraw their services. Subsequently, five local manufacturing companies were selected to start producing nose masks immediately. On April 7, Health Minister Kweku Ajiman Menu announced at a press briefing in Accra that the companies had been tasked to make available 3.6 million nose masks across the nation in 10 days. The Minister for Trade has selected five big companies to sell 3.6 million face masks, these nose masks. They will start delivery by tomorrow. We will take delivery of 150,000 each day and within the next seven days or so, the whole country 
will be flooded this month, especially for health workers. On April 11, Trade Minister Alan Chermantin paid a working visit to some four out of the five Ghanaian garment manufacturing companies selected by government to produce personal protective kits for the frontline health workers. Two weeks after, a directive for compulsory nose mask wearing was issued by the Greater Accra Regional Coordinating Council. Ghana's case count by then stood at 1,154, with the Greater Accra Region alone recording over 900 of such cases. A week after, a directive to all businesses to comply to the strict wearing of nose marks with a no marks no entry notice displayed at the entrance of their premises was also issued. This directive was backed by President in one of his COVID-19 addresses. As as of yesterday, the 25th of April 2020, issued directives to guide the production and mandatory wearing of face marks. We should all familiarize ourselves with them and apply them. One month on, we sought to find if these nose marks have hit the markets and if distribution has begun. Also on our itinerary was whether all frontline health workers have received sufficient PPEs to help them in the fight against the virus. Our efforts to reach the appropriate bodies have been daunting. Attempts to contact the Trade and Health Ministry has also not been successful as our calls have gone unanswered. TV3 will keep digging to bring answers. And in this segment tonight, dancehall artist Bastero has entreated musicians across the country to give back to their fans in these critical times for the love and support over the years. Donating some relief items to some residents of Accra Newtown, Bastero says little efforts may be game changers in the lives of many people. The coronavirus pandemic has impacted negatively on several endeavors and the music industry is no exception. Though concerts and shows have been put on hold, there have been calls for musicians to show love to their fans despite prevailing conditions. Dancehall artist Bastero is the latest to support his community through the Kelly Rowland Foundation. The package consisted of rice, oil, tomato puree, among others, to lessen the hardship some people are going through as a result of COVID-19. Bastero says this is the time for musicians to give back to their numerous fans. As an artist, um, I think I, I have to always be on the positive path. You know? I mean, I have to always support a good initiative. We just have to abide by the rules and regulations of the um, president and then make sure we, we, we maintain the social distance and then wash our hands regularly and then make sure we have our nose marks. Kelly Rowland, who doubles as manager of Bastero and founder of the Kelly Rowland Foundation, advised Ghanaians to adhere to safety protocols and be agents of change in their respective communities. So we have been part of this movement since childhood, and it's our brother, the family, and everything. So we decided to support him. They make it a great day. Thank to help those who don't have, you know, there are these our old men and old women who don't have anything doing. So we intend to give out to them so that at least they go able to easy to also survive on that. Meanwhile, musicians are resorting to virtual concerts to raise funds to support affected persons of the pandemic. And that's it for News 360. Thank you so much for watching. I am Portia Gabo. And I am Issa Mone. Enjoy the Mother's Day. <laughs>